Hi, I'm Tootie, and I work for a company named Substantial. We are a creative technology firm that uses lean development methods to launch products for our clients, and we kind of think they're great products. I'm a little biased, but I uh, want to tell you what we've learned for how to build a lean, mean design team. This is my daughter, Saria. She is almost five, and every day she asks me a billion questions. Why does my bicycle have two wheels? Why is that building purple? Why is that building so tall? And my answer to her is often because it was designed that way. As a parent, I look at her and I hope that her natural curiosity and childlike view of the world means that she might want to grow up to be a designer. Again, I'm biased, but I firmly believe that design shapes the world all around us. Design is the choices we make about the world we live in. And no one knew that as well as Walt Disney, the original service designer who would look at all the continuous touch points across time to build up the magic of Disneyland. And why all this highfalutin stuff matters is that when you want to build a lean, mean design team, when you want to hire up your designers, you've got to motivate them through vision and passion. You've got to show them that the intent of your, pro your end product, you've got to tell them what it means to the lives of the end consumers. And that's going to get them through the nitty gritty, the day to day of 37 shades of blue. Who should you hire? One clear answer for me is don't hire this guy. Don't hire the crazy mad scientist, the visionary who's going to follow this bright object, that bright object, what's sexy, cool, new, that could easily drive you astray. Instead, hire for hybrid designers. Hire for people who are empathetic, who are curious, who do both the process of design thinking, but also design doing. People who are going to get their hands dirty. And it doesn't matter what particular skill they have, as long as they have a broad range. I don't believe you can find a unicorn who can do everything, but hire someone with depth in typography or interaction design. Front-end development. Should designers know how to code? I have to respectfully disagree, slightly, saying that you don't have to know how to code, but courtesy of Marshall McLuhan, you've got to know your medium. If you're a web designer, you better know a little bit about HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Otherwise, what the heck are you doing? So everything that I've been talking about is not unique to design. Design is a team sport. Every single person on the product team, the designer, the technologist, the product owner, the client, everyone should be moving towards the same thing, moving towards the same vision and passion, and the similar type of hybrid thinking. The designer, if you will, is a coach. The person who corrals everyone and pushes them in the same direction, who listens to all the opinions and guides towards a direction that everyone can agree on. And that direction will really depend on a number of different things. There's going to be different disciplines, different crashes throughout getting to an ideal product. And that tension is healthy. I think it gets you to a better product. But at some point in time, you've got to really hang up the boxing gloves and try and figure out where you want to stand on this divide. The short view versus the long view. The Golden Gate Bridge has the rivets, the rock solid foundation of architecture that makes it able to span this chaotic bay. And you can liken that to stories, features, prioritize, day by day, task by task, pivotal tracker. But you've also got to look at the long view. The soaring arches and beauty of the Golden Gate Bridge wouldn't be there without an understanding of the vision and where you want to be. And sure, the red paint was an accident, but that's why you can change and iterate along the way. How you do that is you understand and come to alignment on what the product is. The right balance between viable, feasible, and desirable. Finally, the last thing in building a lean, mean design team is the concept of doing continuous improvement. The answer to are you happy with your product is always no. And you do continuous improvement with design through user feedback. You don't do it in a classroom with a one-way mirror where you do traditional boxed user testing. No, instead you launch your product, get it out into the wild, and see how people use it. There's going to be entirely different contexts that you have never thought about entirely. And what you do with that is once you launch, you launch it into the world, is you see how people use it. And they'll use it in ways you never thought was possible. So watch, learn, and iterate, iterate, iterate until you get to something fabulous. Pulling all of this together, lessons for building a lean, mean design team. One, motivate through vision and passion. Two, hire for hybrid designers. Three, design as a team sport. Four, balance the short view and the long view. And five, continuous improvement through user feedback.
Thanks so much. We'd love to tap more.